the recording. So as I was saying, all your energy, right, is going to wind up being expressed through this 33 and 45. Now, the 33 is the gate of revelation, of, um, of mindfulness, of, uh, you know, really um, kind of almost this Zen, uh, this Buddhist kind of mindset. Um, which ultimately ends in this revelation uh, that you can um, distribute to people. And the 33, that's what it's doing, you see. It's looking directly at the 13, which is the gate of secrets. Um, so the, the 33 is the one distributing the secrets. You know, the 13 is collecting them. The 33 is distributing them. Um, so... It's like you're 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 getting all of these different um, you know insights from all these different traditions that you've been sounds like you've been pretty interested in throughout your life, um, and ultimately, you know, you're going to be uh, transmitting those yourself, and also the forty-five, which is um, gathering together, gathering together, so. Um, anyone with the 45, okay, has this kind of, <laughs> I don't want to say special responsibility, but, you know, they kind of have this calling, I feel, um, to, uh, to, uh, work with this, um, this knowledge and to, uh, um, because it is, it is gathering together. So it's, uh, it's this kind of cosmic meeting place, the cosmic meeting point, of uh, higher consciousness and and our consciousness as it is now, you know that's it's kind of the um, uh, you know the uh, you know uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of like um, you know God in in uh, in um, in you know our true self. Our true self is epitomized by the forty five. You know that's one way of saying. It. Um, yeah, the 33 reminds me of uh, the conversation that uh, Robert Grant had with Richard Rudd, and he was talking about the 11, the 22, and the 33. And the 33 uh -huh. is the um, both, what was the, oh, Hermes, you know, messenger of the God thing. Um, mm. Yeah, so like, wow. Like, I've, I've, you know, the last time I had so many goosebumps was listening to the audio CDs from that Destiny reading. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had another human design done by a guy who works out of Thailand and, you know, that, you know the non-cosmic version. And, I, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm manifesting generator. That feels right. But a lot of the other stuff, it just didn't hit like this is hitting. It's just like, I'm so grateful, man. You're doing awesome work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um yeah, you and yeah, I, I do have to go here in a moment, but um, you know, did you have any any questions about anything? Um, I, I'm just I want to loop back around to what I'd asked you about the moon, like um, yeah, what what hexagrams or lines are connected to the moon or numbers? I and I'm, my human design lingo is kind of rusty. <laughs> so in your case, in your case, um. Yeah, let's take a, well, um, so, okay, first of all, we've got the conscious moon and the unconscious moon, right, um, which are, uh, kind of represent slightly different things, although we're still talking about primarily attraction, uh, magnetic uh, force. Um, in the personality side, it's the driving force of your consciousness, so it's like, your consciousness is seeking, seeking, seeking um, this, which is, in your case, the 44.6. Um, the 44 is called coming to meet, coming to meet. And it's the one right before the 45, which is gathering together the cosmic meeting place. So that's what it's coming to meet, is that, um, yeah, that, <laughs> that knowledge, you know, that... Um, that um yeah cosmic uh, wisdom um 
And so it's the 44.6, you know, the 44, it's, um, it's this kind of, a, it's very, it's a very yang, meaning it's got the solid lines, you know, we've got in, in each of the hexagrams, we've got the solid yang and the broken yin lines, you know, um, the 44, it's got five yang lines and one yin at the bottom. So there's this one yin at the bottom that is, you know, coming to meet uh, the other five yang lines. Um, and so um, it can also symbolize this kind of, um, symbolize that a, uh, that there's actually a negative influence that is seeking uh, union and how to deal with that um, as well. So yeah, how do we deal with these negative influences that are trying to kind of pass themselves off as positive influences, you know, and dealing with that. that. Um, all right. So my, my last thing I'd like to squeeze in before you got to go is um, I'm uh, Richard Rudd talks about uh, the pearl and then there was another path or something. I forget what the other one is. I yeah. remember the pearl. Um, well, you, we've got we've got, you know, so many paths. We've got we've got the pearl sequence. Um, you know, the Venus sequence. The that was the other one, the Venus sequence. Yeah. Um, well, I actually have all of that. You know, I have, I've done the Gene Keys version of this as well, which is basically, actually I have it up here, you know, this uh, golden path thing, um, which is a kind of another way of, of representing everything in this chart. Um, and all the planets basically are given a different name different sphere. Um, like for example, here your attractor field um, is your is your unconscious moon, uh, the 53.4, um, which is developing the true self. So attracting, you're attracting the true self basically. Um, and the pearl here is right in the middle. It's the actually the last one in the whole sequence. Um, and it comes from your uh, uh, your Jupiter here. So um, well, that's uh, can't see it there. Uh, so your pearl will be charity, charity, expectation, detachment, celebration, um, which is the forty-two right here, the forty-two point four, which is that increase, you know, um, which was in the channel of cycles you know the ending of the cycle basically so your pearl is the ending of the cycle um and and the charity that comes from that that comes from yeah maybe you maybe you've gotten these insights okay these massive cosmic insights and now so that you can in turn distribute them uh you know in in this kind of almost charitable way you know to to others um and that and that is going to be a big celebration you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah you know yeah i i could have gone into all of this we don't really have time today but um you know each of the different spheres um like for example your life's work is being the teacher um confusion imagination Illumination, those are the three words of the 64. And the sixth line is where the teacher part comes from. So archetypally, the sixth line in the life's work position is going to be some kind of teacher. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, and for example, your um, yeah, that's your brand as well is is vision, vision. Um, it's because it's the sixth line. It's the sixth line. Um, uh, your challenge slash evolution is the is education and surrender. 
that's also the sixth line. Um, doubt, inquiry, truth, that's the 63. Um, your radiance, which is your, uh, you know, design sun, the 45 <laughs> is going to be um, some kind of marriage. That comes from the second line. So 45.2, the second line in that position is marriage. Is means marrying your life force to something, to some, to something, you know, something outside of yourself uh, that you're in constant kind of contact with. Feels comfortable, feels good to you, you know. Or it's almost like if you don't have that, you feel something is something big is missing from your life. You know, if you're not working on something, if you if you don't have a project, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and dominance, synergy, communion. Those are the three words of the 45. Dominance is the shadow. And that is the state of the whole world right now, really, is being in a state of dominance, you know, by the ruling class, ruling class, essentially, um, which all comes from this 45. You know, that's why it's called the king or the queen, the ruler. Um, because this 45, it's that kind of authority um, to say, I am the king, you know, and uh, you're going to listen to me. So that is the shadow of dominance, right? But then at the higher frequency, we've got the synergy, the synergy, seeing the connections, seeing the synergies between people and things. And then eventually the communion, communion with what? With God, you know, all the time. And, and so that's the true king, right? The true king is God. And, you know, we are all like kind of guests uh, in God's uh, house in a way. <laughs> um, and then we've got the purpose, which is down here at the bottom. Um, pride, artfulness, invisibility, the 26. So at the foundation of your being, your purpose is this um, kind of artfulness, this kind of, uh, you know, at the shadow level, pride at being the best at something or being very good at something. That's the shadow. But art also at the higher level, this kind of, um, yes, yeah, silent, <laughs> silent pride that doesn't care about being recognized anymore, which is why it was called pride when it was called pride at the shadows, because it, all it cared about was being recognized, you know? Um, but at the higher level, it doesn't care about that. And so it's almost like it becomes invisible. You know, it's so artful that it just becomes invisible. Um, I, I find that's my greatest challenge is with pride wanting to be recognized as being the smart guy who knows so much. You know? Yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> I got that one too. <laughs> uh -huh. you know? um, not in this position, but um, yeah, it is tough. It is tough, especially when you see the whole world is, that's all I care about. You know, it's, it's all about, rec you know, will I get recognized for this, you know, um, which is all part of the, ego program that we have to deprogram because all the shadows all the shadows are the ego basically yeah it's like I, yeah a through my the wide net that i've cast like i see the world's on fire and through the synthesis i'm like well i have the the fire hose anyone want to help me like put up the fires and people are like I'm sorry, I'm, I can't help you. I'm on fire. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel, man. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, and for example, this attractor field, uh, the moon. So this is also can tell you something about your intimate relationships. You know what they tend to be like, or what, uh, yeah. So. For example, frigidity slash romance or distance slash intimate, those are, um, you know, your attractor field. And it's the 53, which is developing the true self, which is immaturity, expansion, and super abundance. Um, um, so, yeah, you're, you're interested in being with someone who 
is also being their true self, you know? Um, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that kind of intimacy that can, uh, that can come from that. Otherwise you're going to feel kind of distant, you know, it's going to be kind of distant. Like, how do we really relate? How do I really relate with this person if they don't want to be them, their true self, you know? Yeah. Um, that's, I, I, I've started to get joy out of finding that now where I used to just brush people aside. Now I'm, I, I'm like, no, nah, like, you know, this coincidence or synchronicities that brought us to cross paths. I don't believe in that. So like, there's a reason that we have bumped into each other. And if I'm not looking for, you know, if I'm not, if I haven't fallen in love with the process of getting to know people, I just do my prideful thing and like, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> it was, you know, what, it, this is just one of those things that it was a bump in the road and I just need to keep on going instead of be honoring the, the divinity of those bumps. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, okay. And then we've got I'll, the IQ. Paul right, people. Go it's like, I'm like, you just referred to people as bumps. That's, not very charitable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yeah. it, it was the interaction. It was the interaction <laughs> I was describing as a bump, not the people. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it. But yeah, it could definitely go out like that. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so next we've got the IQ, the flexible mind. The flexible mind, which comes from your um, Venus your uh, conscious Venus, the 31.3 is the IQ. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of detail we could go into all this stuff, uh, but basically your IQ is, is talking about how you think, how you tend to think about things. And it, you, you have this very flexible mind, you know, you like to think about everything, you know, at once, you know. And you can just kind of switch gears kind of seamlessly, which I guess would lend itself well to you changing professions, you know, <laughs> you know, quite, quite often. Um, yeah. uh, you, you're able to do that, uh, you know, and um, yeah. So th also there's this here, here we go with the arrogance again, with the arrogance and pride. That's, that's the shadow of your IQ. You know, maybe you think, oh, well, you know, I mean, I can think about all these things at once, you know, that I'm, that makes me great. You know, I'm just so great. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. But, yeah. um, you know, at the, at the higher frequency, it's leadership and humility. Um, the EQ is how you relate to others. So it's either with respect <laughs> or disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> um tends to be tends to be and um you know this is the 39 provocation dynamism liberation um which is which is your mars energy 39.5 um which is a root energy yeah it's this energy of provocation so it's almost like you know um Maybe you, when you first meet someone, you kind of like, I don't know, tell them a little joke or something or to just to see how they'll relate, relate or react to it. And if they get pissed off or if they take it the wrong way, you know, then you're like, okay, hold on a minute. Maybe, maybe, maybe this person's really not for me to interact with very much, you know, but if, if they really get it, you know, and there's that connection, uh, yeah, then then we're good to go, um, you know, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Um, your SQ, the spiritual quotient, it's uh, it's right in the middle, so you know that it's going to be a big deal, and it's what you uh, most need in your life for for your spirit to feel okay, okay with life. And that is certainty, some kind of certainty, uh, some kind of rhythm and routine, you know. Um, you like your routines. You've got to have your routines, you know. If, if, if you don't have it, then there's something off, you know. Something is going uh, not quite right. Um, at least that's the way it feels, you know. Um, so certainty, it's very, it's very good for you. Um, 
not the certainty of complexity. No, 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 that's the shadow, you know, but the certainty of simplicity, um, which is the higher frequency, the 23, that's the 23. Um, your core wound basically is telling us about um, how you tend to react to any kind of wounding, you know, um, patterns or ego patterns, some kind of, uh, or, or, or how you relate to them. So some kind of shame, which is counteracted with humor, you know, shame. Maybe you feel, yeah, like you look at something and you're like, oh, well, wow, you know, I can't believe I did that. You know, I kind of feel ashamed of myself. You know, um, that is how you tend to feel when you are, when you, and we all have been wounded, you know, uh, and we all react to it differently. Um, so with you, the humor, humor is is the real answer. Um, and, and yeah, just taking things lightly, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's no big deal, um, you know. Uh, and we're all one in the end, right? Because that is the city of unity. Um, vocation, basically telling you what ideal kind of career, uh, job, um, position you'd be best suited for. Strategy, the producer. So the guy who brings all the pieces together, right? That's what the producer does. Focusing on you know, getting the director and the writer to kind of cooperate, making sure everything stays on track for the production, um, which could be likened to strategy, overall strategy. Um, you know, say we're taking this approach, we're gonna we're gonna flank them here. You know, all these different strategies, uh, because you can see how the parts uh, interact. Um, Culture is describing your ideal working conditions uh, or scope of your work. Uh, in your case, the network. <laughs> so the network means uh, more than a few people, more than a group, but less than a than everyone, less than the whole society. So this uh, kind of network of uh, within a society of people. Um, who you are, you are able to influence um, and who you it is your goal to influence in a way. Well, influencing with what? Awakening. Wow. Awakening. <laughs> That's ultimately what it's all about, uh, you know, uh, which at the shadow can be quite agitating because it's like, why well, won't these people wake up, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, you're I'm getting these images in my head about uh, um, combining singer songwriting and comedy and being like a performance artist who oh, just cool. this just goes from coffee shop to coffee shop or you know small venue type of a thing where I can have that smaller section of humanity that I can really have a nice interaction with instead of being this huge audience type of a right yeah. Yeah, that's definitely that's definitely more up your alley. Um, because yeah, I mean, I mean, you're we're not here to impact everyone, every single person. You know, we all have this kind of fractal, as it's called in the human design language, this kind of fractal of uh, different people that we're kind of destined to meet along the way in our life, and and you know, interacting with those people. And then finally, we've got the pearl, you know, which I said was charity, um, expectation, detachment, celebration. So, uh, yeah, almost another kind of Buddhist thing here, you know, where we, you know, non-attachment, non-attachment to things um, <laughs> is going to be rewarding in the end. <laughs> so I have I, I have the name for my band, which I haven't even started to like. <laughs> You're right think seriously about but it's heaven's island party oh cool heaven's island party i like that yeah so i'll be on the side stage <laughs> heaven's island party come and check us out <laughs> cool 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 <laughs> oh well all right scott um i do have to run here but and i'll send the recordings to you as soon as i can um 
and yeah, please let me know if you have any other uh, questions at any time. I have one final question. Um, yeah. I, I haven't really looked at your website other than just to schedule this. Um, are you teaching this, what, what you're doing with me now? Um, not quite yet. I plan to, though. I plan to make a course. Uh, well, I plan to have well, a course. As soon as you put that course together, I want to buy it. So, okay, great. I'll uh, I'll definitely let you know then. Awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks, Scott. Um. Yeah. Nice meeting you. Really nice meeting you. Um. And yeah, have a great day, man. Thanks, you too, brother. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. See ya. Take care.